All righty, we'll get started. It is three past the hour. Let me just uh, dump the um, meeting minutes into chat so that they're all there. Uh, yeah, if you could please add your name here. And welcome everybody to the QVET community meeting. It is the 31st of January, 2024. Um, Welcome. I hope you're all having a good day, um, whatever time it is. Um, we like to start these meetings um, by inviting anyone who is new or anyone who has uh, lurked before and hasn't taken time to introduce themselves um, to introduce themselves if they would like. So I'll just mute and you can just... Um, I'll take that as a no, in which case we'll move right along. So the schedule check-in, um, hopefully we're all aware that next week on the 6th of February, we have our feature freeze. So if you have something that you would like to have uh, featured in the 1.2 release, we've got uh, approximately five and a half days or, or maybe closer to six days um, to have that, have that merged or else it will have to wait until um, subsequent release. The next thing we have is having a quick look at our events. Um, we still have the DevConf uh, Czechia. Um, CFP is open, it's open till the March, uh, 3rd of March. Um, for reference, uh, the upcoming CFP check-in, you can find this at the community wiki. Um, and I do try and keep it updated. This weekend, we've got FOSDEM and we've got uh, four Kubert related talks. Three of them are on are in the virtualization and cloud infrastructure dev room, which is on Saturday. Um, and one of them is in the, I want to say, testing and continuous improvement dev room. Uh, I don't know which day, and it doesn't look like Daniel's here to tell me. Um, but if you click on the link, you'll see exactly uh, where it is. Um, and I don't think I had this updated last week. So we've got our um, currently accepted um, KubeCon uh, EU 2024 um, sessions there. So we've got a, um, a sponsored keynote. Um, our um, maintainer talk is by the Six gallon performance, and we've got a contrib fest, uh, which is nine minute hackathon. That's all very exciting, and hopefully we'll have um, the uh, Qvert kiosk once again at Project Pavilion. We have yet to hear back. Uh, we don't have anything on the agenda just at the moment. Minute, um, if while we uh, continue on through the meeting, something strikes you and you would like to add it to the agenda, by all means add it and we will return to it before we finish up today. So I'll move to the open floor and Aurel, you have something here. Yes, hello everyone. I um, wanted to raise a little subject. We have the GitHub issues that currently have uh, two possible labels. One of them is a bug and the other one is a request for enhancement. And as I understand it, it means a, a feature request. But I also would like to raise another need, um, which is backlog management. Um, let's say, for example, that you go over the code, you find some part that you think might be optimized, but you don't have really the time or capacity to uh, create a PR right now. But you think that someone in the community can, or maybe it could be a good first issue. Maybe someone from outside of the project would like to chime in and try to solve it. So I'm suggesting to maybe add another uh, label to our issues. I wanted to hear your feedback. What do you think? Is it a good idea? Is it not? I think this is a great idea because I also see a lot of features, uh, issues about some features are closed right now. 
we need some label which wouldn't close by uh, tailboard. So that will means that we have this issue. Uh, yes, we still need an implementation for that, but this issue shouldn't be closed. If it's not closed by the bot, so what do we expect to close it? I think uh, I expect that it will add, be added to backlog and sometime in the future we'll come back and uh, resolve that, like to write an implementation or something like that. So I think that uh, let's, uh, comparing this project with others that I saw in other projects, what happens is there is a guy that goes over it, a dedicated person, which we don't have here. So more or less we don't have. Maybe Andrew is doing it, I'm not sure. But what what usually that person is, is very uh, aggressive. Like, like I saw places where my the, PR, the issues that I opened were closed in the same day with a simple answer. And he said that if I have uh, any any other thing to to ask or add, I can reopen it. But but I think that this is the other. I mean that this is the other extreme here. This, the, this suggestion: if you mark something that will never be closed, then most likely we'll have ten thousand issues open. We because if someone if no one is taking the the ticket, I don't see how we can force someone to take it. You cannot force anyone to take it. You just suggest it as a, you know, a place for improvement or a place for refactoring or maybe even discuss this refactoring if it's not like something uh, that is trivial. But currently what happens usually, if I understand correctly, you know, we, issues are open, they're either addressed by someone or it, they are being opened here to discuss in the community meeting and are asked if someone can give a, a hand. Or the person that opens it, he just doing a lot of marketing and uh, things like uh, many, many people until he gets uh, some attention. Interest. And you are saying we should add another option. Like, I mean, the question is who will, who will look at this label and do something special about it. This is the part that I don't understand. That's also a point of view, and I also like it. Uh, the only thing is that we need some list of backlog, probably uh, to collect all the features we would like to have, but we have no capacity to make it right now. I have an example Actually, yeah. like VDPA user interface for storage or for networking. I was talking with client today and they noticed that issue is closed and they don't know what does it mean? Like this feature will never be implemented or what to expect? Actually, I was looking into this backlog option as more like the uh, improvements and not like uh, or refactorings and more not like feature request because we do have the kind enhancement labor just for enhancements so i was thinking more like little it's not it doesn't need to be little it could be big optimizations and improvements but not stuff that you can do right now because if you could do it right now you would just issue a PR and just finish with it. Well, uh, in my opinion, uh, the kind announcement label is exactly uh, for this kind of things, actually. Because uh, announcement is not just, OK, we need to improve something like something uh, little. It's it's in general. We, a feature is an announcement for my point of view. Probably just me, I don't know. Yes, it's an RFA. It's a, it's a request for announcement, yes. So if I understand correctly here, the, the proposal is just to uh, drop the life cycle stale and rotten uh, issue for uh, 
uh, this kind of labels. But uh, I don't know. I probably uh, I agree with uh, Eddie probably that uh, this requires that people uh, in the future uh, should close the issue that uh, has never been taken. And it's right basically away. the same of doing uh, the removal cycle rotten right now. I don't think that these uh, issues should not be controlled by the bot. Uh, they should, because if it's open like for a month, then nobody cares about this uh, proposed refactoring. But you don't have any means of telling people or asking people to take them. It's just based on goodwill. So what can, I don't understand. So what are you proposing? So just one second. So first of all, the, the previous uh, comment about uh, if it's closed, if the bot is closing it, it means it will not be in the in the product. Yes, that this is exactly what it means. Unless there is another, uh, it is reopened or someone is actually working on it and something was missed. So I think, yes, if no one is touching, is taking care of it, it will, it means that there is no one that has enough capacity or resources to implement the, the feature or what, or even fix a bug or whatever. Regarding the, what you are, what you're saying, or I like, I'm, I'm not clear what is the, what you expect the process to be. I mean, what, what should we do more than what we are doing today? Like usually in this meeting, we are going over the new issues or that have been open. So what else can, what more can we do? Right now you have two kinds of issues. You have bugs and you have enhancements, which are RFEs. But you don't have like, you go over the code, you see part that you think might be optimized, but you don't want to do it right now. Because if you wanted to do it right now, you would issue the PR for it. Sometimes you don't have capacity. Sometimes the change might be very big. I can give examples, but I don't think there is much time for it right now. So I wanted to ask if do you think there is a place for a third label, which is like a backlog or something? There, I think there is, Andrew, can you correct me? There is a label that says that it was uh, triaged or something like that, right? Which is more or less... I would need to uh, check, but that I mean, I've definitely seen a triage label applied. Usually sure triage easy. means that it it was considered and there was like uh, someone thought about it, right? Something like that. And then there is an action, a possible action item that it, is, it may be taken for processing or something like that. And it is owned by someone. So I think it's, for example, in this case is like, let's say that you open an issue and you want to, and you notice it, you or you see a different issue, then you can say you can, Take ownership on that, assign yourself to it, and then make sure that you will, uh, it will not close it. I mean, after a period of time, it will go into stale and you can continue taking it. But what I think that we do have, uh, in addition to that, we, we do have uh, a label of, that says that you, you have thought about it and opinions were given and so on and so on. I think so. How if, uh, Kubernetes project uh, works in that way? Do they have any backlog? Is anybody knows? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm checking. I also think they have a trias or something like that. I think they are marketers. They have they're not one of accepted. What? They have uh, labeled three H accepted. Okay. Yeah, something like that. So maybe but... one option we could have here is that we have. Um, well, I think I think we have a triage label. Um, we could potentially have that have a longer um, life cycle so it doesn't go stale and rotten quite as soon as I think it's 90 days and then 30 days. Um, and when it does go, well, the 90 days, it, 
90 days for an issue does seem like a reasonable length of time for someone to come in and either take it or let it continue to rot. Um, I guess one thing we could do is that we could, um, on a weekly basis in this meeting, collect those stale um, issues and go through them and make a collective decision. Do we want to let this um, continue to, to rot or does someone want to jump onto this? Just wanted to point out that when you create a new issue, you only have two options. It's either a bug or an enhancement. It's like the template of GitHub that Qbert uses. Oh, okay. I, I thought I've seen issues that have neither of those. Sorry, but what is the it, what is except bugs and enhancement? What what is the third option or fourth option? Or maybe what? Or like little enhancement. We usually used that in previous project, but I don't think that we really need this. Could be backlog. Backlog what? But what it is? But now it's classified. I think it's Either more state bug. than type of issue. Re refactoring proposals. No, that's a PR. Why should I? And still enhancement. No, it's no, it's not. It's enhancement. It's like uh, yeah, it's like I don't know. But why? Why should anyone will put an issue with enhancement with? Uh, with the refactoring, refactoring. And, yeah, I don't, don't you can mark it as a tech debt you can mark it as i don't know no but that's like a, a, i don't want to manage it if someone wants to do a refactoring then maybe, maybe you're right i don't know it's like we have so many already so i'm thinking that you uh, someone will add like another 20 i have like I, if i'm going sitting in front of the Editor, I can probably find like 100 options to refactor, but I will not open uh, 100 issues. I will just probably little by little add PRs, but I don't know. Looking at the Kubernetes can use... uh, template, uh, they have bug report, enhancement, tracking issue, filing test, and flaking test. And then they have uh, report security vulnerability and support request. Just for your information. I might, I might, yeah. Um, how about we continue on with this meeting and then if we have some time, we can return to it at the end of it. Um, and if we don't, we can take this to the mailing list. Does that sound fair? Thank you, guys. Thank you. That's uh, yeah. It's it's, it's an uh, interesting uh, point you've raised. Uh, thank you, um, Larry. Relocating yeah. Kubert SEV servers. Yeah. So I just wanted to give everyone a heads up. I I'm not sure how active the work is right now on you know the the memory encryption side of things, but um, we are currently uh, relocating a lot of our public facing servers uh, into kind of an individual rack, and so. Um, I just wanted to make sure that everyone knew that there's a very good possibility that, you know, either this weekend or next that those servers are going to be going down and they will be coming back up. We're still going to keep them there for you, but just have to move locations. So. Oh, that is good to know. Um, would you be able to send a quick email um, to the mailing list just because I know the yeah, two I'd people that immediately that. spring to mind are not currently here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, is there? Um, I, I can't imagine we have that much work over the weekend. But uh, do you have any idea of downtime? Like just a super rough estimate? Um, it, it shouldn't be more than uh, a day. I don't think. I mean, they're just they're like it's in the same. They're just kind of moving it from one end of the building to another end with a rack that's dedicated for these. So perfect. Thanks, Larry.
All righty, moving along. Um, so we have one pull request that I saw that has not had any attention. Let's see if someone's taking a look. And Michael has. All right, so I don't need to look at that. Thank you, Michael. And uh, a few bugs. Let's see if anyone's had a look. They have not. All right. IP is empty in restored VM because of MAC address conflict. Using Valera to back up and restore the VM. Uh, MAC address conflict. This bug uh, looks similar to something that one of our colleagues, Ram Lavi, had worked on. I asked him to have a look. I hope it's the same. Awesome. Thanks, Ram. Um... Actually, I'm not sure if we can even do, based on what he's saying here, is that they are saving, they are backing up a, a VM and then restore, rest, restoring it. And they are saying that the, they are backing up the same Mac, the, it's backed up with the same MAC address. And then when they restore it, the same MAC address is restored. And then there is a problem with, uh, uh, with the IP because of the MAC address conflict. I don't think he, I don't understand how, how it can be solved um, in covert, covert. This is what I mean. I mean, like maybe it's, it's something someone else needs to resolve it. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not familiar with the covert Valero plugin. I'm you not clear how me. they. You can tag me in this uh, bug, and I'll try to find uh, Valero people in charge of the Valero plugin. Awesome. I know that in uh, sure. I know that in other features, what we did is like we provided a patch that clears up the MAC address. That's what we did with the VM clone. Yes. I'll have to check what happens in Valero plugin. If they back this up and there is a explicit MAC address there, they must clean it up. It's like. Yep. Okay, unable to create a virtual machine. Clear and concise. All right, I think. Go, go 1.21. I've got no idea what version of Qvert or communities we have here. Um, so I can take care of that. Unless. Uh, this looks familiar to anyone, and they can diagnose it straight away. I'll ask them for more information. All right. Maybe your driver installation fails using invalid PCI input out the region when passing through high VRAM GPU. All right, now this one, uh, they, memory serves, have to work around by disabling the EFI BIOS. It'd still be nice to be able to pass additional parameters to the firmware as outlined above. Um, yeah, is that a, a fair enough uh, recourse or request? GPU pass-through, is this going to be um, 
best looked at by our friends at NVIDIA, or is this um, more for the SIGVIRT team? I think maybe check with Vladik in this one. Okay. We will do. Thank you, Brian. Just two more to go. Ah, this looks like an issue raised on ducks. Fair enough. All right, I can look into that one. Responded. Okay, uh, vert CDL VM export download removes VM export even if it was not able to download. Um, do not remove it. VM export. Alrighty. Um, Alex, is it fair to assume that this is a SIG storage issue? Um, yes, yes, it is. You uh, can, do you uh, want me to tag you on this or should yeah. I tag? You can tag here. Okay, thank you. All righty, and those are our bugs. Um, just a couple more things. Uh, the flaky test fixes. I try and check these every week, and we haven't had one of these for a while, but this week we've got two. Um, and is Igor here? He is not. Um, is anyone able to, um, uh, to kind of talk us through this? In a way that will be more, um, uh, sane and rational than what I will be doing. Well, uh, here the problem was that uh, we have we had a function in our test suite that uh, get basically was getting the the pod of our migration, but uh, during our live migration there could be two running pod in the same time, uh, and sometimes. Uh, it returns the source pod instead of the target pod, and uh, this creates uh, some flakes. Uh, this is quite general uh, what was wrong. Wonderful, thank you. And don't go anywhere, because I think you've got the next one. Oh yeah. Uh, if but, okay, uh, basically the bug was that uh, sometimes uh, it could happen that uh, the the restore that was generated by a VM clone uh, was wrong, and this because was generated uh, starting the patches for the new VM was generated starting uh, taking the uh, current running VM instead of the VM snapshot content. Uh, this means that it could happen that uh, between the snapshot and the restore, some label or some annotation can, should be added uh, to, the, to the virtual machine. So the patches that uh, was applied uh, are referring to a VM that does not have that uh, labels and this causes a fails because a failure because it was not able to remove for example some keys okay uh, 
it is not uh, happening uh, so much time uh, currently uh, and the fix was pretty uh, easy uh, it was enough to uh, always uh, start always create the restore from the snapshot content instead of the uh, of the running vm and uh, yeah this is it awesome thanks for that it is always lovely to see flaky tests being fixed. Thank you, Igor and Federica. All righty, that brings us to the end. Um, we, um, oh yes, uh, hello, Mukesh. Welcome to the Qubit community meeting. Um, now, we did we want to return to the backlog GitHub issues or do we want to take that to the mailing list? We've got uh, 20 minutes, 15 minutes left. I suggest let's take it in the mailing list. Fair enough. In which case, that is the end of our agenda here today. Um, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you everyone for jumping on the bugs, the PRs, uh, for being involved in that conversation and for providing fixes. And also for pointing the finger at people who can help us with the, um, some of this, these issues. Um, I hope everyone has a lovely day and a wonderful weekend. Uh, for those who are traveling to FOSDEM, uh, we'll see you there. We'll, I'll be mostly hanging out in the Vert Dev Room on Saturday. And then um, if you're interested in talking QBERT, I'll be um, doing some time at the CentOS OKD and RDO. Uh, table. So there'll be some Qbert stickers um, available there and you should be able to find me in my Qbert shirt. Uh, have a lovely day, everyone. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. Thank you. See you. Yeah, bye -bye. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah. See ya.